We're still in our Christmas reflections and we are looking at Matthew's account of the birth of Jesus Christ, Matthew chapter 2, verses 4 to 5. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. King Herod was the one who received the wise men, and uh, he was troubled by their message, and, and Jerusalem was troubled by these august visitors who are looking for a king who has been born. And apparently, King Herod was familiar with the star symbolism regarding the Messiah. Uh, he probably wasn't a student of the scriptures, of the prophets in the Torah. Uh, and so he called the chief priest around to make inquiry as to where uh, this king is to be born. And the reason why Herod was troubled was that he was not a legitimate king of Israel. King Herod, called also Herod the Great, was from Idumea, which was in the southern part of Israel. And, and um, he was not considered legitimate, and the people didn't like him. But the Roman government and the Roman forces, the Roman Empire, liked him, and so he was an imposed king. So, of course, hearing that a new king has been born uh, would send uh, a lot of uh, shivers down his spine. So, uh, that's why he made inquiry. And I like what the priest uh, said when the inquiry was made. They said, thus it is written. The religious leaders knew that you couldn't guess these things. You had to go to what is written, the importance of the written word of God. If you want to know the will of God, you have to know his word. And the chief priest did not quote their opinion. They had to quote what was written and what was meant by what was written. And so they simply quoted the prophecy of Micah, which we dealt with last week. And this prophecy indicated exactly the village or the town where Christ was supposed to be born. So we see the importance of the written word of God. God's written word reveals his mind. You know, these days, uh, people feel that, that the Bible, uh, it's there, it's a nice book, but, you know, we want to hear God speak to us. We want a prophetic word, uh, which is current. Well, this word written by Micah was current. They, they didn't ask a prophet. They just went back to the written word of God, and it was current or those spoken hundreds of years earlier, still current. And that's the importance we attach to the word of God. It is still current. So when I read the Bible today, although the words were written thousands of years ago, it is still current. It still speaks to me. It still answers my questing. So for these wise men on this journey, the written word of God answered their questing. It helped them find direction for their life. And may the Lord help you to find direction for your life and answer your questions as you encounter uh, the written word of God. And the other thing we find uh, from here is that God is committed to his written word. God spoke through the prophet Micah, and Micah was dead, but God was alive. God never dies. His word never dies. And although the original speaker of the word of God was gone, God watched over his word hundreds of years later, to perform it. So God is committed to his word. And any time you read the Bible, remember God is committed to his word. If he says he loves you, he's committed to it. He says he will have mercy on you, he's committed to it. He says he will lift you up, he's committed to it. He says he will forgive your sins, he's committed to it. God is committed to his word. And any time we encounter his word, remember that he watches over his word to perform it. And so we learn from this story that the word of God spoken in time past is still relevant to us in our time and in our day. And this Christmas spirit, may the word of God become flesh in your life. May the word of God be manifested in your life. May the word of God take on reality in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, 
I trust your written word. I commit myself to study, believe, and live my life according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I'll catch you again tomorrow. I'm Pastor Mensah Otabel. Shalom, peace, and life to you.